Hi, I'm Daniel Myers, Developer Relations here at Snowflake. Today, I'm interviewing Mozart Data, Peter and Dan. Folks, how are you? Doing great. Awesome. So to kick this off, um, you know, my, my first question is just really, you know, what is Mozart Data um, and how did you get involved in this space? So uh, we're Mozart Data. Uh, and we're the easiest way to spin up a modern data stack. Uh, and what that means is really starting with all of the places that you generate data, you know, whether that's databases, SAS tools, uh, maybe data in CSV files or G sheets and getting it all the way to uh, an insight. And we leverage a number of partners across the ecosystem to really help teams get started on that journey. So typically, uh, you know, a problem is that it's just really hard or people don't even know where to get started. And um, we want to be a company that really uh, enables other companies to do the type of data work that, you know, we love and respect. Awesome. And so, um, you know, how long has Mozart Data, uh, you know, when did you found uh, Mozart Data? Yeah, so, uh, so we founded Mozart Data last April. Uh, actually, just just right after the start of uh, the pandemic, um, and interestingly, though many of us have worked together in the past, none of us have worked together in the same room on Mozart data. So, um, so yeah, we're a, a really new startup, uh, just uh, nine months old, uh, but. Obviously, it's been a really wild and crazy and exciting uh, nine months. Um, Dan and I have been friends for uh, over 20 years, uh, known each other since, since college. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, let's see a demo of, of Mozart data. All right, hopping right in. So uh, like Pete mentioned, we're trying to build or we are building uh, the easiest way to spin up a modern data stack. Um, and what that means to us at the centerpiece is a data warehouse. We're using Snowflake under the hood. So right after you log in, this is sort of the menu of your warehouse. Um, I'll come back to this in a second. The, the first step is really getting data into your warehouse. Uh, so this is a view of your connectors. In our demo environment, we've got a Shopify instance hooked up and a Google Cloud Postgres database hooked up. Um, here are the connectors that we currently support. So most of our customers have some sort of a database that they're pulling in, some sort of application database that they're pulling data in. Some of our most common connectors are Shopify, Salesforce, um, Google Sheets. Everybody's got something going on in Google Sheets that they want into their warehouse, different ad platforms, data on S3, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so step one, hook up some data. We'll start syncing that data into your Snowflake warehouse. Um, here you can kind of see how that's going. Uh, step two, I suppose, is view your data. So for instance, that Shopify instance is being replicated into the Shopify schema as these tables, and that application database is being replicated into this web public schema as these tables. So you can kind of get a high level view. You can write descriptions of your tables. You can export them as CSV. You can, you can query them here. I'll show a quick query. We've got some basic functionality around querying, exploring your database, um, things like that. Uh, the next feature I'd like to demo is basically, you know, it's all well and good to get all these data from these disparate sources into one source of truth warehouse, but then the next thing you need to do is kind of reorganize it a little bit so that it's easier to use. So here we have a demo query of, we've got one table of our Android events, another table of our iOS events, and we're kind of reshaping them so that we can then union them together and filter out test accounts. So, you know, bit kind of a standard data cleaning and reorganizing task that analysts spend a lot of their time doing. And it's all well and good to be able to see this within a browser, but what you really want to do is have, you know, an easy way to start building these views as data pipelines. Uh, so a core design principle of ours is that you should be able to have the power of a, a modern data platform if all you can do is write SQL. So you don't have to manage Airflow or cron jobs or any of that. You can just say, hey, I want this to be scheduled as 
mozart.factevents, and then that query will be replicated. We'll handle the scheduling and all that. Here, I'll run it once now. And now we can see, we can just select star from mozart.factevents, and we have the same results as that big query. So, you know, your analysts don't have to remember, oh, don't forget to filter out test accounts or don't forget to join, you know, both Android and iOS events if that's the analysis you're trying to do. And then from that, you can kind of start to build data pipelines. So here's like a daily active users transform that's fairly trivial because we're building off of that previous data transform. Um, one other thing I'd like to demo uh, is this new feature of ours called snapshotting. Um, so for example, we have this Shopify table inventory level, which is, it's always gonna be the current state of your inventory. Um, we're pulling it, we're syncing it every five minutes, I think in this case. So you'll always have a fresh view of your inventory within Shopify. That's great, but we don't have that data as an event stream or as history tables. But if we just say, I want this table snapshot, then once a day, we'll take the entire contents of that table and append it to another table. And so we've got this Shopify inventory level snapshot table. Um, and what that lets you do is very easily build you know, you could track the inventory level of, you know, our cogs over time, even though the actual data that we're storing is just the current state. Um, so I think it's a good example to demo because it's, it's the sort of feature that Pete and I have built at numerous previous places where we've worked. And that feature of a data platform has nothing to do with um, the specifics of a company. It's just a feature that is useful to data analysts or operations folks, no matter the types of data they're trying to, to deal with. Those are the sorts of features that we're trying to build. And then the final step is basically using your data elsewhere. Once you've kind of imported it into your Mozart Snowflake instance, rearranged it, maybe built some snapshot tables. Um, you know, we basically can hook up to any, anything that can hook up to Snowflake, which is hundreds of different tools. Awesome. So, so what is, so this is, this already looks incredibly powerful. So what are some of the challenges as you onboard more connectors? Uh, Cause it looked like you had a, a, a very large list of different connectors that you already support. Um, what are some of the challenges that you see moving forward, adding more connectors or, or in on top of that, what are some existing challenges that you've encountered when adding the connectors that you already have? Um, I would say, say one challenge is, so if you're, if you're a data engineer at a company and somebody on you know, your operations team says, hey, we're using this new SaaS tool, can you pull, it out, pull the data out and put it into our data warehouse? You can kind of go back and forth with them on what, are, what part of this tool are you using? What is kind of the ideal schema um, to represent that tool's data into our data warehouse? Uh, we have to kind of, we can do that with our customers and we do do that with our customers, but then we also kind of need to think what are, what's the generically good way to represent this company's API as a schema in the data warehouse so that it works both for this customer, maybe that we're building it for right now, and it will also work for future customers. Um, with minimal, like, you know, we have the transformation feature, so that's a good way to kind of say, oh, we don't care about these things, we're going to clean that out. So we can transform the data in any way, but you want to make sure that we have it in a, in a reasonable state for anybody who's going to want that connector. That's a great point. So how, you know, what are some of the considerations that you have when, you know, when defining that data there, right? For, for that connector, you know, you, you said you want to kind of make it as, as usable as in, to as many different people as possible. What are the elements that you look for when deciding what to include, what to not include, or how to transform it? I mean, we, we err on the side of, you know, it's easier to ignore data than to use data that's not there, um, so, sort of a tautology. So we err definitely on the side of put data in, even if somebody is like, I don't, we don't need that column. We don't use that, that feature of this, of this thing. Uh, so we'll err on the side of putting more data in, and then you can always clean it up. Um, there's also a lot of, a lot of databases. So like if somebody uses Mongo or a lot of APIs will kind of have generic schemas via the RESTful API that don't map directly to like a column database. Um, 
so one nice thing I would say about, about Snowflake is the really nice query patterns around unpacking JSON. So we, you know, we'll err on the side of just put it, if it's a unstructured JSON, just put it into a Snowflake as unstructured JSON. And then the customer, the user of that data can unpack it and kind of design the optimal schema for themselves. That makes a lot of sense. Um, where, you know, you know, so you mentioned how Snowflake kind of fits in for that unstructured JSON data and kind of, you know, you can use that variant column. Um, you know, what are, what are, how else does Snowflake fit into Mozart Data's tech stack? So, I mean, I would say Snowflake is at the core, we, you know, for each of our customers. We, we started by thinking maybe we'll hook up to our customers, you know, other data warehouse, whatever they prefer to use. Um, we pretty quickly found that, you know, the, the biggest value we could bring was to companies that know they want to do more with their data, but kind of don't know where to start. Um, so now we're kind of being opinionated about, about the pieces and trying to choose the, the best in class of each component and then giving that to our customers in one, you know, easy to use platform. The way that Snowflake offers you to kind of be able to separate compute with storage is pretty key to how our business operates. That lets us, um, you know, I'll say save money for our customers um, because we can share compute across different databases. Um, and it gives, you know, just from a security standpoint, it means things are separate by default. Um, you know, we don't need to worry about separating things by schemas or anything. They're in totally separate databases. Snowflake is kind of designed around that principle of, of separating data and making it you know, impossible to share across. Very cool. Um, so what, you know, what, what are some industry specific elements that you have learned when dealing with your customers, right? So um, you know, in my own experiences, I've seen, you know, some of the asks of somebody in the finance industry can be very different for their data than somebody in, uh, say, you know, the oil and gas industry, right? Um, how, uh, how have you seen and how does Mozart handle, you know, these industry specific needs to data? Sure. So um, we do also, uh, not to the same extent as Snowflake, but we also do have a wide array of customers. So customers that range from two person startups that were in our Y Combinator batch to customers that are, you know, large uh, with large data. Um, some are in the B2B space, some are in the B2C space. So, so there is sort of um, a nice breadth of, of companies um, with different types of problems. Um, the first is a lot of data problems to me are, are, are quite universal. So there might be different data inputs, right? So obviously if you're dealing with a B2B company, it's almost certain that they're using a tool like Salesforce. If you're dealing with a direct to consumer company, they might be using uh, you know, a platform like Shopify. So there are gonna be different data ingestion. So obviously that, that's gonna vary very much by industry or by type of business. Um, but ultimately, most companies are trying to get at, um, you know, what is the lifetime value of my customer and what are the components of it? How, how retentive are my customers? And then what is the cost of acquiring that customer? And the sources there are actually quite similar. Now, in, you know, direct-to-consumer, it's a lot of Google, a lot of Facebook advertising. In B2B, you start to see more, more you know, other sources you see, you see, you know, things like LinkedIn, you see other kind of uh, uh, other places where people are sort of able to advertise and, 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 you know, acquire customers in a measurable way. So really at the end of the day, while you'll see, you know, very big differences, uh, you know, in terms of how these businesses operate, they're really trying to understand, you know, what, who is my customer? Tell me things about my customer. You know, they're asking themselves of, of their data, um, but that's what their, what their, you know, sort of analytical folks are trying to get at. And they're also trying to understand um, what does it cost to bring in one additional user because they're largely trying to use data to grow that company. Um, so while I see, you know, obviously differences in the, in the ways that people ingest it, I think the, the nuances tend to be a lot about you know, how you, how you define customers in these industries um, and how you kind of are able to 
to really get a good signal because you know if i'm if i'm somebody with a subscript you know that maybe uh likes you know dan I, I, one of the things i forgot to mention was dan and i have previously run a hot sauce business uh, together about 10 years ago we, we founded a hot sauce company called bacon hot sauce um, and ran that for 10 years and you know when people would buy a hot sauce bottle, you know, you could understand maybe they would, you know, buy it again in the future. Whereas if you're, you know, a B2B company, you might have a one-year contract and you're hoping to renew that one-year contract exactly one year later. So um, at the end of the day, it's like, what are the good signals of a good long-term relationship with a customer that are really going to be important across industries? Makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So, um, you know, how do you tailor uh, the ingestion uh, and the connectors and, and, and the transformations um, of the data to meet, um, you know, you mentioned that there's both, you know, that there's definitely some universal aspects to the data that you're getting, yes. um, you know, and so uh, to what extent have you seen that those, that, that universal, you know, data ingestion kind of principles um, uh, facilitate these new customers? Um, and how often do you have to kind of tailor the approach to a particular customer or industry? Sure. So on, on uh, let me start with the data sources side. So with data sources, they're almost every company, they've got maybe a handful of SaaS tools that are like straight down the center of the plate. You know, they're using, uh, you know, uh, their, their Salesforce's, their HubSpot's, their, their, you know, their Facebook and Google ads, and it's very, very straightforward what it is they're using. But then almost every company has two or three sort of what I'll call like right tailed uh, connectors that, you know, they're in a specific industry that has this very specific, maybe accounting software or functionality that, 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 uh, you know, most of us had never heard of. So there is, almost what is consistent is that there's almost for every company a right tail of connectors. And again, a lot of the power of Snowflake, a lot of the power of doing data analysis is about joining date, this data together. So on the connection side, one of the universal laws is there's almost more uh, you know, SaaS tools than you could possibly imagine. Then on the, on the cleanup side, there's also sort of a universal, which is all data is messy, right? All data is sort of nuanced, is its own sort of special Snowflake. Right. So what that means is, is that like every company really, there's a bunch of like where clauses, if you will, that define uh, a lot of what the standard terms are. And how we see this is that you want to empower the folks that understand the business, understand the business logic and can write business logic, you know, uh, as code to be able to um, clean that data, to empower them to clean that data. Um, now, Dan mentioned in the demo that one of our design principles is that you should be able to do that with just SQL. So we see, again, as another universal, is that there's this growing population of folks that are sort of data savvy. Um, maybe they're not titled data analyst or data scientist or BI or data engineer, but they're very data savvy. They might be in operations or business operations or marketing operations or sales operations, but they really kind of live uh, eat, drink, breathe, sleep data. Um, and they're comfortable now, uh, you know, with, with, uh, you know, BI tools, writing SQL, all of these things. And um, we see that population growing and wanting to really, uh, you know, have control over the ability to use that data. Awesome. And so moving forward, how can, um, our viewers, uh, connect with Mozart Data and uh, connect with you. Great. So, um, in many ways. So, first off, um, you know, follow us on all the social platforms. We're you know at Mozart Data, uh, and then of course, um, Amadeus at MozartData.com is probably the easiest way to uh, to reach out to us and you know learn more about our platform or visit us at MozartData.com. Awesome. Well, thanks folks for, uh, for joining. My name is Daniel Myers. Thanks.